Hello everybody, this is Bodrich and um, yeah, I tested some things here with our stupid game level select. This is what it looks like. You're an O walking around. Look at this, look at the apple. Look at the apple. You ate the apple and won the game. Yes, <laughs> that's the game. Um, so in this video, let's make that game. Um, let's do a git reset hard head and there the game is magically reset to the previous state which is this you know and uh, that game that I just show you the apple game uh, it is a, we, we can do it with using the same techniques uh, as I did uh, yeah to achieve this we don't have to do much work at all actually uh, first we have here, this says now direction. Uh, here we want to print our character, Öman, like that. It doesn't have to be this character, of course, you can print any character you want, whatever. You don't need this. Um, and then I thought, let's make a, a little function for moving the character uh, in different directions here. So instead of just changing a variable, let's uh, call a function that we can call move and pass uh, the direction we want to move. And then we of course have to write that function here. So move takes one argument and store that argument in a local variable called the deed for direction. Um, and then we don't print anything here. We can also remove this crap. Um, so, if we want to move a character, we need to know where the character is currently located. So we can store the position of the character in, in um, some global variables. And it's a good idea, in my opinion, to prefix global variables with an underscore. Uh, but you don't have to do that, of course. So let's set the current X position can be 3. And then the current Y position can be, I don't know, 5. And that means third column, fifth line. Uh, and then instead of just printing uh, this character like this, we do this. Then we change this to our character. <coughs> Maybe we could store the character in a variable as well. So we can do uh, player is equal to this. And then we can use that here. Current y, current x. Player is referenced, ah, underscore player. All right. So now if I start this, it will print our player character at this position. Um, and when we press the arrow keys, it will uh, call this move function. And the move function, let's remove this echo here, will not do anything at the moment. Just to see that everything is working. And there it is uh, at the fifth line uh, and the third column. Looks right to me. Okay, to move it, all we have to do is uh, change this uh, X and Y uh, positions and, and then use something similar like this and yeah, move the character. So, yeah, we can copy this case statement here because we will test it. Test for the direction here. Let's do this. Uh, we don't need these guys. And we are testing the deed value here. Okay, so what we do is uh, change the value of the uh, x and y here. It can be a good idea to, to store these uh, the, the new positions that we will calculate in, in some local variables as well. 
and I think I want to use uh, this method to create these local variables. Declare i, x and y, and that will create two local variables called x and y. And using declare with a i option like this will force these variables to be uh, integer numbers. Uh, so they cannot be strings and that is uh, kind of good to do when you're doing games and things like this When you know that you're working with numbers it will um, use less uh, memory basically and, and be yeah, Faster and better for for math operations It's not a big difference, but it makes a difference when you're making a game um, And then we can set uh, initiate these uh, two the global variables to start with here and when we move left uh, that means that we will uh, decrement the value of x it will to move it to the left of course and moving something down is uh, decrementing the value of y moving something up we will uh, increase the value of y Oops. increase the value of y and moving it to the right will increase the value of x with 1 that is what these double plus and double minus those are extremely common available in almost all uh, programming languages uh, so this means is the same thing as uh, writing something like x is equal to x uh, minus 1 or even x minus equals 1 this is uh, this this is also equivalent to writing the other way, other way around uh, often this is kind of preferred to write it like this because you have more control here sometimes you maybe want to decrease it with 2 or something and then it's easy when you have this notation but whatever now we do this uh, and then we just move our uh, character printing this same thing here but now using our local variables uh, y and x and then we update uh, the global variables here now also we have to do that so it will work the next time we call this move function. Now let's test this game. Pressing right, move it to the right. But it also, pressing down, it moves upwards. So that's wrong. Pressing down, moves down. Or pressing up, moves down. So I have inverted these. Yeah, down of course, uh, we have to increment because uh, we increment the line number. We're moving it down. And up should be minus there. Okay, but it also leaves a trail, and I don't want, want that, I want it to uh, erase any trail, so it's a sneaky character here. Uh, and to do that, uh, we could just print a space at the old location, and the old location is uh, stored in the global variables here. So, yeah, that is this thing, so why not copy that, like this, and then a space. No. Well, now we got a dollar sign there because I was sloppy in my erasing. Look at this. We got a, some kind of a game here. Um, right now, the, uh, since the game and, and everything is so simple here, it doesn't really matter. But uh, we could get away with uh, one echo here uh, if we just... Uh, prefixed or we can add this to the same line like this this will do the same thing and it we, we cannot tell any difference now but in a game when you update a lot of things it's it it, it makes a big difference um, but it gets a bit cluttered and uh, difficult to read so I prefer to do it this way create a local variable uh, with an empty string and now we can do op is equal to the first thing we want want this string to be the 
space and then we can just append more things to the same string here like this and then we can o echo op and since this string now is initiated as an empty string or even if it wasn't we, we could do this and I, I like to do this because it just looks uh, nicer to use plus equals here as well so this will uh, append this stuff to the empty string to this variable and then this will yeah you get it same results just a little bit uh, cleaner and readable code and sometimes it's even necessary to do something like this if you yeah, want to add a lot of things uh, in a loop for example you add it uh, as, a, as a variable like this and then just a single uh, echo can update a lot of different positions <clears throat> let's make that uh, apple so we got a goal for the game you know apple x is equal to whatever 15 apple y is equal to 10 uh, and then we can print uh, the apple position here instead and the apple yeah I guess we can do that in a variable as well apple is equal to at let me change this to apple and there now we got the apple but, and you can see I could eat the apple and it disappeared because it prints the space after I've been there, you know, so um, if we want the red apple, of course we want that. Uh, then we can, um, we can use teapot. Uh, we can even do this to be good boys, you know, C red, color red is equal to teapot set AF, set foreground color. Uh, one I know that is red and then um, I like to create a variable that you can call C res for restore and that is teapot sgr0 don't ask me <laughs> and then we use these variables here um, let's do this C red and then C res C res there now we should have a red apple and the reason I, I use this uh, res uh, restore here if I if I don't use that we will still get a red apple but that will uh, have unpredictable results here now as you can see now our player also gets red uh, and stuff like that so it's kind of important to restore to the default uh, foreground and the background color and you can do that easily with this so now we got a red apple we got the positions of the apple and everything and now all we need to do is uh, test here uh, if uh, the new position we are moving to is uh, the same as the apple if it is we have won the game you know um, there is also another thing that we maybe should add here but I, I don't know it doesn't really matter right now but uh, there is a, a, a bug you know if we move outside of the terminal here if I press left now uh, we will get a like a negative number and after a while I'm still pressing left and it moves right because we got a negative number and then we decrement from the negative number which will result in a positive number you know math is weird so that's what's happening here uh, so it's a good idea to, to uh, uh, make some tests that we are not uh, outside of the boundaries of uh, the playing area so to speak but whatever let's not do that now we can do it in the next video instead let's um, test here uh, if, if uh, we are eating an apple and I guess we can let the player eat the apple and then we print it here if um, x is equal to apple x and y is equal to apple y also note here uh, the double equal signs is needed when you're writing tests with the double parentheses math tests like this um, 
but you can do things like this to create multiple uh, uh, tests inside one pair of parentheses and whatever. If that is true, game over, and then we can pass win, <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's overkill, but whatever. And then we create a function here called game over. Uh, and here we can do, let's take this stuff here. The apple is eaten, you won. Yeah, let's just print it at this location, whatever. Then we can do a sleep rsn1, meaning uh, it will wait here till we have pressed one key. When we have, uh, then we can just do an exit here. An exit will trigger our cleanup function uh, or the trap here, the cleanup trap, the exit signal will get uh, triggered and the cleanup will get, get executed and we will get back to our terminal. Yeah, this is good. I just remembered another thing uh, that we should do here as well, but let's test this. All right, he ate the apple. Ah, sleep RSN1. Read RSN1. The apple is eaten. You won. But we didn't eat the apple. It stopped here before the apple. I wanted it to... Ah, well, of course, we need it after the echo here. Okay, I press any key. H. Boink. So, I want this here. So, what I wanted to show you is actually, it is one of my excellent uh, uh, viewers commented on the last video that... Uh, because I, I mentioned that... Uh, our game here, it, it kind of resets and, and removes everything uh, that was previously in the terminal, uh, which is a professional uh, software like HTOP here doesn't do that. We, we still got the old terminal output, but our game, it, it will uh, remove everything when we get the empty terminal. You ate the apple one, yeah, and there, it's empty. All we need to do to get the same behavior as uh, HTOP is uh, to remove this teapot reset. Hey, oh, it works. Thank you for watching everybody. Uh, see you in the next video. We, we try to make this game a little bit more interesting. Have a nice day. Bye.